We're going to draw the orbital overlap diagram for formaldehyde or methanol. Now this is a carbon atom bonded to two hydrogens and an oxygen. In order for the Lewis dot structure to work, in order for all of the octet rules to be satisfied here, you need a double bond with the oxygen. Ah, that's going to be the key to your orbital overlap diagram. A double bond always consists of a sigma bond, that's the first bond between any two atoms, and a pi bond, that's the second and third bond between any two atoms, but it's just that one for the second here. Now, what that means is that carbon, which normally has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, needs to hybridize to accommodate three sigma bonds, one, two, three, and a pi bond. Do you know how that happens? I do. The answer is you combine the 2s along with two of the 2p's and you leave one of the 2p's unhybridized. That's what lets you form a single pi bond. If there had been a triple bond here, one, two, three, bonds, the first one would have been sigma, and the next two both would have been pi. You would have left over two of the 2p orbitals, only hybridized these two together. Now, you're hybridizing these three circled orbitals, that is an s and two of the p's, you're going to call them sp2 hybrid orbitals. Get it? Two of the p's and an s, and you're making three of them because you used up three atomic orbitals to make it. The 1s is unchanged. Sometimes I won't even draw that, but I already did here, so whatever. And the way you're going to spread these four electrons out is one per orbital. Now I know that that violates the Aufbau principle, but this hybridization explanation kind of supersedes it. We just promote one of the electrons up there and call it a day. Now, this is here just to show you what the electron configuration is for carbon, you're going to make three sigma bonds, and you're going to make, leave one of the two p's open for a pi bond. I want to point out that oxygen is the same, but oxygen brought two extra electrons because it's atomic number eight, not six. The way that oxygen is different is that you have an extra electron here and here. Those represent lone pairs inside the sp2 hybridized orbitals you'll be able to make one sigma bond here and one pi bond here to explain the bonds to oxygen. Now we come to the diagram. I want you to draw yourself a carbon. There's my C. Now, I have three sp2 hybridized orbitals. Those are shaped or arranged in a trigonal planar way. So I'm going to draw one out to the side, one that's coming out at you and one that's going into the page away from you. That's about 120 degrees between each of them, especially if you're thinking about this being a circle. I'm trying to show you that it's tilted this way and you're looking at it head on. These are each sp2 hybridized orbitals. And the 2p leftover orbital goes above and below that plane. I'm going to label it 2p and leave it there. Please note, this is trigonal planar along the horizontal plane, and these are above and below the bond axis. Now, oxygen is actually hybridized the same way. You need one sigma bond. That is an sp2 hybridized orbital. You actually still have two extra hybridized orbitals, but they have lone pairs inside. See? And oxygen also has a 2p orbital left over. There it is. Now, to be clear about the bonding between these two atoms, the overlap of the sp2 hybridized orbitals is what gives you a sigma bond along the bond axis. The sideways overlap of these 2p orbitals combine to make you a single pi bond. I know it's weird that I'm drawing two lines to represent one single double bond. <laughs> like, these two combined make the whole 
double of the bond, but that's the way the electron density occurs. We have graphs to prove it, even if you've never seen them. And lastly, that carbon is, of course, attached to two hydrogens. I just draw those as H's with circles around them. That circle is the 1s orbital. Hydrogen does not hybridize, and you're done. Now, officially, the overlap between the sp2 of carbon and the 1s from hydrogen also makes a sigma bond, and this is also a sigma bond as well. And there you have it, orbital overlaps. The sigma bond between carbon and oxygen is between carbon's sp2 hybridized orbital, that's in black here, and oxygen's sp2 hybrid orbital, that's in black and pink combined here. The overlap to give you the double bond between carbon and oxygen is about a leftover 2p orbital on each, doing a sideways overlap to link the two atoms together above and below the bond axis. That is the pairing of carbon's leftover 2p with oxygen's leftover 2p. Fold, connect, the electrons can be anywhere above or below the bond axis. Oxygen has lone pairs in its sp2 hybridized orbitals, and carbon's sp2s overlap with hydrogen's 1s to give you extra sigma bonds. Oh yeah, what a beautiful diagram. What a beautiful you. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.